Hello everybody, um, today we're going to be starting our first topic of genetics, which is meiosis. And meiosis is going to act as the basis of our genetics unit, because meiosis makes unique haploid cells, or sex cells, cells that are capable of being combined together um, during sexual reproduction. Um, so let's start with our basic overview. Um, meiosis at its most basic form is kind of like when mitosis happens twice. If you remember mitosis, mitosis starts with one um, cell that splits into two. Well, meiosis splits one more time, so each cell has um, half of the number of chromosomes as the original starting cell. Um, some basic facts, and then we'll go into exactly how these things happen. Um, one is it produces genetically unique cells. Um, compare that to mitosis, which produces identical cells. The cells are haploid. Um, meiosis only takes place during a certain time of an organism's life, and these cells are used in sexual reproduction. Um, so let's just start here with the body's chromosomes. Here are all the chromosomes in a cell. There are 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes, um, the best way to describe them are, here's one from mom, one from dad. There's um, one from each parent, um, and these are both four chromosome one. So there'll be one set of genes from mom, one set of genes from dad. Um, these are your homologous chromosome pairs, number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on. Right, so if this was your cell, there'd be one from mom, one from dad, 23 pairs of those. Um, the first 22 pairs are called autosomal chromosomes. They code for everything non-sex related. And then the final pair um, are known as the sex chromosomes, and they code for sexual characteristics. Um, we need to know this before we start our meiosis discussion, right? So imagine a cell with 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. That word homologous is going to come up a few times, just as an FYI. Um, so if you remember the steps of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, you've kind of remembered half of the steps of meiosis um, because... Um, those same steps occur with just some mixes here and there of what happened during meiosis. Um, so meiosis overall is split up into two main phases, meiosis one and meiosis two. Um, each of those phases has four smaller phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Um, and this slide here is a slide that you'll need to know because it contains all of the important information of what happens during meiosis. I'm gonna go through step by step in a minute, but this is it boiled down to its most important stuff. Um, so there's this process called crossing over, which I'll describe here at the bottom in a second. That occurs during prophase one, um, and prophase one takes place in meiosis one. Um, during metaphase one, um, you have homologous chromosomes randomly assort. Um, and that leads to something called independent assortment. Um, pairs of homologous chromosomes separate in meiosis one. Um, remember, homologous chromosomes are similar but not identical, one from mom, one from dad. So mom and dad's chromosomes would separate in meiosis one. And then in meiosis two, sister chromatids separate. Um, and remember, a chromosome is made up of sister chromatids that are usually identical copies of each other. So this is like the most important information on this one slide. And I'm going to try to take you step by step through each one of these things. All right. So the first thing here is crossing over, um, which occurs during prophase one. And let's look at this diagram here at the bottom. Crossing over, crossing over happens between pairs of homologous chromosomes. And so again, here's a pair of homologous chromosomes. Let's say one is from dad and one is from mom. During prophase one, those chromosomes get really, really close to each other. So close, they end up overlapping at different points. Um, well, once they end up pulling apart, uh, what actually happens is that those pieces where they overlapped end up exchanging genetic information. Um, and that exchanging of genetic information makes each one of these homologous chromosomes a little bit different than what it started with. Um, and so... This crossing over can occur basically on any one of the autosomal um, 
chromosomes, so 1 through 22, at multiple spots along the way. So crossing over is responsible for a large chunk of genetic diversity um, when we talk about meiosis because it makes random and new combinations that weren't seen before in the homologous chromosomes to start. And so this process is called crossing over. It happens in prophase one. Um, and then as we move on, metaphase one, the homologous chromosomes would separate. So if we're looking here, separating, um, you know, this green one from this yellow one here, separating moms from dad. Um, those are the key parts of meiosis one and then meiosis two, sister chromatids separate. So the left and right halves of the X separate. Um, and we can see kind of the step-by-step -step of what happens here. This is what you would see in your book. Prophase one, nuclear member, it breaks down. These things form chromosomes. Chromosomes cross over, exchange genetic material. Uh, metaphase one, line up in the middle of the cell. Anaphase one, homologous chromosomes get pulled apart. Telophase and cytokinesis, we have two cells here. Um, and then it would keep going. That cell was split again. So prophase one, metaphase one lines up in the middle. Or sorry, prophase two, metaphase two. Um, anaphase two, the sister chromatids separate. So the left and right halves of the X. And then telophase two, um, it makes the nuclear envelope for all four of these cells. Um, and so what we have at the very end are four genetically um, unique cells because of crossing over and because of independent assortment. Um, so let's just compare mitosis and meiosis really quick. Um, so meiosis produces unique cells while mitosis produces identical cells. Um, the cells in mitosis are called diploid cells because they have both pairs of homologous chromosomes. That's the definition of diploid. While the cells in meiosis are haploid, they only have one set of homologous chromosomes, either one that was started from mom or one that started from dad. They are haploid instead of diploid. Um, in meiosis, that process only takes place at a certain time of the organism's life. Um, if we're talking about a male, uh, a human male, that is once they hit puberty. Um, and if we're talking about females, it happens all before they're born. Um, while mitosis happens continuously throughout an organism's lifetime. Um, and then mitosis can be used or involved in asexual reproduction while meiosis is exclusively used to make sex cells and used in sexual reproduction. Um, one last little bit here. Um, and this is the difference in meiosis between males and females. So up here is a male, down here is a female. Um, so gametogenesis um, is the production of gametes. It's basically the end result of meiosis um, for humans. And so this process, gametogenesis, the, the making of the gametes, the making of these haploid cells that are used for sexual reproduction differs between males and females. If you look at a male, um, it basically just looks like meiosis, right? One cell splits up into two, two cells split up into four. Um, and those four cells can mature and turn into sperm cells. That's different than what happens in females. In females, the cells split unequally with only one egg being produced at the end and then two to three of these polar bodies. Polar bodies are basically just shells that contain extra DNA and a cell membrane. Um, only one of these cells can end up being fertilized and that's the egg cell. Um, this happens, this uneven division happens um, for a reason. And that reason is the egg cell is responsible for providing the nutrients um, and all of the initial energy needed um, during the early phases of development before um, an embryo implants into a mother. And so what happens is if you look at the sperm, it's really, really tiny compared to an egg. And if we look at a real one, um, it is significantly smaller. Let me pause and show you. So here's a more realistic picture of the egg versus the sperm, right? The sperm's main job is to just get to the egg and deposit its DNA. Um, the egg, on the other hand, is bigger. It needs to provide all the nutrients for the first couple cell divisions. It needs to take care of the DNA. And so if we go back and look, um, the reason for that is so that um, this egg cell has a better chance of producing an offspring. 
Um, so you have this uneven division where um, one cell is given all of the cytoplasm, um, all of the organelles, all of the nutrients to make sure that this egg has a good chance of surviving. That also helps to explain the difference in reproductive strategies between males and females, which, will, which we will end up discussing a little bit more um, on Friday. Um, that's all I got for you today with our introduction to meiosis. Um, thank you for watching.